Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how and why you should be using Windows Sandbox. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Windows Sandbox feature. Now, Windows Sandbox, if you're not sure what it is already, is essentially a safe environment that you can run applications, programs, and websites in without having any negative effects on your main operating system. So if you've got perhaps a slightly dubious website you're trying to visit, or alternatively, you've got a file you've received and you want to open it, but you're not entirely sure of its contents and you want to play it safe, then Windows Sandbox is the place to do it. So what do you need to run Windows Sandbox? Well, the first thing you need is Windows 10 Professional or Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. Now this must be updated to the latest version, which is Windows 1903, the most recent of updates. Which is actually ironic because it would have been quite nice to have the Sandbox feature prior to the update, so you can actually test it to see if it was suitable for your system. But anyway, at least we've got it now. So what do you need hardware-wise to actually run the Windows Sandbox? Well, Microsoft lists the system requirements as being quite modest. Dual-core processor with hyper-threading, 4 gigabytes of RAM, although 8 gigabytes is preferable, 1 gigabyte of hard drive storage space, preferably an SSD, and that is pretty much it. It doesn't really require a great deal. Essentially, the actual installation footprint itself, the app, is only 100 megabytes in size and is a completely stock installation of Windows 10 1903. Now, I've been using it for a little while now, doing some testing and testing websites, and I would say that realistically, you need a slightly more beefier processor. Ideally, a quad-core or above. Uh, in my case, the Ryzen 7 1700, with its eight cores and 16 threads, handles it quite nicely, but if you try and record what you're doing, an operating system within an operating system with OBS, then it does tend to start struggling. So bear that in mind if you're trying to make any content. Also, you'll need for your motherboard and for your processor to support virtualization. Now, most modern processors will support this. If you're not entirely sure, check with your manufacturer's website, or alternatively, you can head into the system's UEFI or BIOS and see if there's a checkbox for enabling virtualization. You can tell if you've got virtualization enabled already on your system by going into Task Manager and looking in there, which I'll be showing you a little bit more of shortly. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how to go about installing it and actually how to use it. Okay, so on the Windows desktop, first of all, you can make sure your processor will support this. So right click on the start and choose system. And this will give you your system information. So this gives you information about your processor, your RAM, and also your Windows version. So as you say here, Windows 10 Pro, like I said previously, this will only work on Windows 10 Pro or the enterprise version. Unfortunately, previous versions like Home, it will not work on. Also, it needs to be updated to the latest version, which is 1903, as we touched on a little bit earlier. Obviously, if you're watching this video a little bit later on, perhaps six months down the line, and we're on version 1908 or whatever they plan it to be, then you should be good to go. So if we run Task Manager, which you can type just task in the task bar or start bar, and you can run it from there. So if you look into performance, and then it tells you about your processor again, and you can see if virtualization is actually enabled within the processor. So we've got our eight core, 16 threads, and virtualization is enabled. So we're all good to go. So how do you install Windows Sandbox? Now, I've already got it installed, as you can see from the shortcut there, but I'll go through the steps. So the first thing to do is to type into the search bar, turn, as in turn Windows features on or off, or actually you could type in turn Windows Essentially, it's the same thing, or you can get to this from your control panel. So if you click on turn Windows features on or off, wait for the list to populate and scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll find this section here, which says Windows Sandbox. If yours hasn't got a tick, just put a tick there, click OK, and after you've done that, you'll get a message saying that your computer needs to reboot and it to install some files, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I've already done mine already, so I'm not going to get that message but you will have to and go through the reboot process. This doesn't take very long at all, maybe a couple of minutes, that's about it, but I thought I'd uh, save you from that in this particular video. So once you've got Sandbox installed and it's restarted the computer, all you need to do is in the search bar again, type in Windows Sandbox, and you can launch the app. If you want to create a shortcut to the app, all you need to do is right click on the app there, and then you can choose to pin to start, 
unpin from starters I've got because I've already got it pinned, as you can see there. And I've got it in my start menu already, but if you want to pin it, you can choose either of those options. So you've got a, a permanent shortcut. Now the first time you run the program, it will take a while to load because it's creating an image file. But once you've done it once, the second, third, subsequent times, it will open a lot faster. So if we open the Windows Sandbox now, like I said, it takes a little while. It is actually decompressing a basic Windows file image every time it does it. So it is to be expected it will take a few seconds. It's not like opening up a web browser. Okay, so here we are in our uh, Windows desktop environment. And if you want to, you can make it full screen. And you get the old kind of Windows XP uh, bar at the top to remind you that you're actually not in your own operating system. This is quite handy and you can uh, pin things and it shows you things about Wi-Fi or connection info. This is a connection to the kind of the server that's running in the background. It's, uh, it's not a Wi-Fi connection or anything like that or internet connection. It's a connection to the actual kind of virtual image. But anyway, let's uh, minimize that again. So restore it back down. And again, this is an extremely basic installation of Windows. There's very, very little installed on here. I've just installed WinRAR uh, because part of the program or part of the reason I'm doing this is to check on a file. So actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So I was sent this uh, update file from uh, people at Nui and they want me to test this firmware on a camera. So I thought, well, it's obviously a good idea to uh, see what the file has got, see what it contains, making, making sure it's safe, all that kind of stuff. So if I choose copy, then click onto our Windows Sandbox environment, right click and then choose paste. So there's our RAR file. So now we can safely extract a file and if there is anything in there which is uh, not so good, it isn't a problem because we're in our safe sandbox environment and it can't do anything to the outside world unless I copy the files from the sandbox back out onto the desktop. But that would be a pretty daft thing to do so we won't be doing that. So we've got another update file now, so let's extract that as well. And this is all of our camera files. So everything looks okay there. And we haven't had anything flag up to say it's a virus or a warning or a suspicious file. But just on cue, you can turn on virus protection. Now in this, I don't think you can actually turn on virus protection because the virus protection is kind of a different subset of Windows. So even though you get the, the messages for it, you can't actually turn it on. You can if you want to install a third-party antivirus within the sandbox itself, such as uh, Bitdefender or whatever it may be. If you want to do that, you can do that. Hopefully there shouldn't be a need for that. But anyway, that's just an example of what you can do to check files before you actually go ahead and use them. Again, you can do it with certain apps to see if they're uh, suitable or if they contain any malicious software. But another thing that a lot of people will probably want to use it for is for just internet browsing. So this essentially is a very, very secure incognito browser. So if you don't log in, then as soon as you close that window at the top, click on the X, everything that has happened is going to be erased. So no internet history, all that kind of stuff. So let's go to Microsoft Edge and I'll show you what it's actually like. So in our browser, uh, say for instance, free movies online, because those are the kind of sites which generally have uh, bad things on them. So what have we got? Let's try vexmovies.org. So uh, let's try Avengers. That's pretty popular right now. And so we could choose an Avengers movie. I don't, I've never been to this site, so I don't know if it's uh, good, bad, or indifferent, but generally these kind of sites are the ones that have kind of loads of pop-ups and virus warnings and warning your computer is infected, all that kind of stuff. Um, actually seems okay. So in this actual testing uh, situation, this has actually worked out okay. So if I was happy with this site and there's no pop-ups and no bad stuff going on, I could quite happily copy that URL from the top there, copy that, and then open up my browser on my main desktop and maybe shortcut it for another time. So again, that is just another way that you can actually make use of the Windows Sandbox to test out websites and to test out files just to make sure that they're all okay. And also it's a little bit of fun. You can have a play around with it because essentially it's a copy of Windows within Windows. So if you break it or you do anything to it, then literally all you need to do is click on the cross at the top like that 
and you get the message saying, are you sure you want to close the Windows Sandbox? Once Windows Sandbox is closed, all of its content will be discarded and permanently lost, which is a, a good thing. So we'll click OK, and that's it. All is forgotten. So now if we want to go into the Sandbox again, you just click on the shortcut, wait for it to reload. So like I said, it takes a little while because it's unpacking the image and allocating its hard drive space and all that kind of stuff. And there we go, we've got our fresh desktop with, uh, again, nothing installed, everything that we had previously. So the WinZip or WinRAR installation we had previously is now gone. If we click on the start bar if it's still, uh, I think it's still loading. Yeah, as you can see, the WinRAR is gone from the top. So we're back to a clean operating system. And again, we can close it and forget all about it. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. It's only 100 megabytes storage in the background, so it's not going to take up a load of room, but it can be quite handy. Okay, so there you go. There is Windows Sandbox in action. What do you think of it? I think it's actually a pretty neat feature uh, for me personally, checking out websites, especially when I get a lot of emails come through from various different online traders and they're saying, check out this website to see what our product's like, if you want to review it, all that kind of stuff. So for me, that's actually really handy because you never know if these things are legitimate or not. They come from all kinds of weird and wonderful uh, domain names, so you're never quite sure. And also, again, people do refer to me and say, oh, Mike, I found this great site for watching movies or listening to content or streaming or whatever it may be. So this is perfect for me to try those websites in the safety of a sandbox. So if it all goes horribly wrong, I can just click on the red X and uh, forget all about it and move on to the next thing. So there's Windows Sandbox, how to use it and its benefits, etc. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll be catching you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.